So, as promised, joining us today is Joe Jasinski, who is a seminarian for the Archdiocese of Boston, studying for the priesthood. Can't wait. In 2027? 2027, Please God willing, God. will be the date. Yep. Oof. Yep. How you doing, man? Doing well, Bishop. Great to see Always you again. Always great to see you, too. A, a, a graduate of St. John's Preparatory John's School. Prepar Should we sing the Alma Mater? Well, we, that right? might be a little much. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. We have time frame. Yeah. After the show. That works. After that the works, show that is works. over. <laughs> So, uh, so you 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 factor into this effort uh, to to win some basketball games in in, in terms of uh, the, the this this tournament. Tell us about how you get involved in this because it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is a lot of fun, and it's a blessing to be a part of. And it's kind of a thing I know for myself and many others that was sort of an unexpected blessing of the seminary. You know, we knew we'd get the academics. We knew, obviously, we'd have the time for prayer. But, you know, the recreation and the sports were, yeah, just really, really a great uh, kind of secondary supplemental thing. Father Peter Sharippa, who is in uh, South Boston the now. Captain. El Capitan. The dunk master. I don't know if that made it into the that video. Master. But, uh, yeah, we called that the Lexington chin-up right there. Uh, he was great. My first year really got me on board with, with soccer and definitely with basketball. I can see that he would be. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, he's a competitor in his own right, so totally, yes. Yeah, he's kind of like he's kind of like St. John's Seminary's Jay Fadden. Yeah. <laughs> Very great parallel there. Absolutely. He yeah. is. So we're trying to replace that now that we got him out uh, in public ministry. But um, it, it really was such a blessing uh, to be able to join Peter, learn so much from him, and, uh, and more importantly, kind of grow uh, – in fraternity with, with you guys did quite well too did you know well that? i mean you almost pulled it off wins and losses not so much uh took the l three times out there this past year but i'll tell you like you know and we're seeing i think the manifestation like yes obviously we go out there to win and to compete but um you know the the other stuff as i said the fraternity the hmm. spiritual growth um fellow captain this year deacon marcelo ferrari says it best it's like if you want to grow in the spiritual life you got to make it tangible and um, you know whether it's the 5 a.m. practices or whatever it might be you know we're able to have those experiences that we can then take to prayer and yeah, you just see just kind of the synergy between the two. I know those guys from Our Lady of Guadalupe, the fraternity guys, they, they can be yeah. tough. They're country boys, you know, we're talking about <laughs> Midwesterners here, they're built yeah. different um, but you know what we, and, and we thank them like so much of sort of the blueprint that, that they kind of created in their basketball program and a lot of these other seminarians uh, seminaries too um, going out to DeSales two years ago you know we came back and we said we like we want more of that mm. so so Peter and I and some other guys tried to formulate a plan that sort of modeled them but yeah I mean those guys it's it's so great you know it's like it's like masculinity you know mm. they're, they're competing on the court they're they're in prayer for hours upon hours of the day and they're with their brother seminarians. It's it's just so beautiful to, to see. Now, people want to kind of experience last year's tournament, the fraternity, you know, the, the blood, sweat, and tears. Sure. Uh, Souls in the Game is a documentary that can help you to kind of almost be there. Whose idea was this? Where did it come from? Yeah, I mean, um, Father Peter won't say it. I think he he wanted at some point, like, you know, this was, this was a, such a good... You know, we wanted to show people it, but, you know, in his kind of like humility, didn't want to just go forward with that idea. Um, our head coach, Patrick Nee, a uh, great, great man from down in the Westwood area, he actually approached Peter and said, hey, Peter, let's, let's try to like, get the ball rolling on this. I got some people that would be interested. No pun in, intended. No pun intended, right. But, uh, you know, he sort of got, got everything going. And, um, yeah, I will say, like, throughout the entire thing, we were very kind of um, <clears throat> apprehensive. We didn't want it to, like, overtake the organic like goodness around the sure. team yeah. and and thanks be to god and and thanks to Ann Gennaro and her team um in production and like, does a great job she's Doesn't phenomenal she? yeah. oh my goodness yeah um and such a holy woman too like mm. i mean she saw that this was not just a basketball thing um and i think that's something that we try to come back to as often as yeah. possible you know it's got to be christocentric and um yeah we're just thankful that that she was able to kind of tell the story um in like a raw organic way like we wanted to tell it and she did a christocentric basketball tournament now we have we have other things in common besides having graduated from the great st john's prep i have family in in boxford you do yeah which is your hometown mm, it is my niece megan her husband dave and their two great kids uh but also uh we have a lot of viewers in hawaii and i know you taught in honolulu taught for not? a couple years people yeah. in hawaii want to know about wow. this wow yeah so i i taught at st francis school 
right adjacent to the UH campus in Honolulu. Sadly, uh, St. Francis closed my second year after 94 years of service. Nothing to do with you. No, I don't think so. I don't think so, sadly. But um, man, just uh, a, a huge mahalo to, to the people on the islands. I mean, the hospitality that I uh, enjoyed there and, and the way I was received there, um, I always look back so fondly on that and, and hope to go visit uh, my friends there soon. But um, just incredibly caring, loving people on the islands. Uh, and what about St. John's Seminary? You know, anything you can say to a young guy that might be watching, you know, yeah. is this a good place to be? Is this oh. a great way to I mean, uh, I, spend your life? I've, I've told people, I've, I've been very blessed in my life to experience a lot of great things. And um, these past two years at St. John's have been the best years of my life. Um, I think what I'm slowly learning, and I think, thanks be to God, through the faculty, through prayer, um, I feel like I'm becoming more and more who God created me to be. Um, it is a special place and seminary formation is a special thing. And, and I'm sure you would say, and God willing, I can join you in saying the priesthood is, um, I mean, a calling that, that goes beyond Oh, words. it's well worth and, whatever sacrifice and effort. And uh, you have a great community over there, yeah. a great bunch of guys. Amen. And we pray for you every day. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, that, that, that you will be able to discern God's will. And so uh, is, is, is Peter going to be captain again this year? Uh, so, so Peter has moved on. So okay, he's he in can't more come of back. a captain emeritus role. Okay. Uh, he's actually getting some guys to play pickup basketball Good. in Southie. So if you're living in Southie and like to hoop, um, get in touch with Father Peter Sharippa, Gate Father of Heaven, St. Okay. Bridget. He'll get you in. Um, Very good. But we're hoping to have him back. And soon. what about what about uh, souls in the game? Where can people watch this? They can get a yeah. taste of your fraternity and absolutely, and yeah. So you can look on YouTube. Type in souls in the game. You can access it through the St. John Seminary website. Um, but YouTube souls in the game is probably your easiest route. Souls in the game on YouTube. Can't wait to see it once again. It's a great take, Joe. Absolutely. Thank you for thank coming you. all the way Should over bring, from St. You. John Seminary. Get back there and keep doing great things. Thank and you. tell all the guys we said hi. We'll do. Thank you, Bishop. Okay, thank you. Stay right there for a second. We're going to go over to the uh, the news desk. Kevin, what's going on all around the Catholic world? Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican on the recommendation of the Catholic bishops of mainland China. In consultation with the Chinese government, Pope Francis has named two bishops from the country's mainland as members of the Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. Two bishops from mainland China will be present at the Synod on Synodality in Rome. They will be among the more than 460 participants who will take part in the assembly from October 4th through the 29th. It has not yet been confirmed if they will stay for the entire time, as was the case in the Synod of 2018. Their participation five years ago was historic. Even Pope Francis was moved during the opening mass. Oggi, per la prima volta, sono qui con noi Anche due confratelli vescovi della Cina continentale. Diamo loro il nostro caloroso benvenuto. Dell'intero episcopato con il successore di Pietro è ancora più visibile grazie alla loro presenza. Synod organizers confirmed that excluding the Pope, 364 members will have the right to vote, including 54 women. The four-week event will also bring special guests from around the world. For example, a representative of an association committed to helping migrants and refugees will also attend. This is Luca Casarini, who exchanged letters with Pope Francis in 2020. In them, he had expressed his concern about the situation of refugees in Libya, after the closure of European ports due to the pandemic. To those who escape torture, rape, slavery, and brutality of all kinds in Libya, we say, no, you cannot enter because you might get infected. Therefore, either you drown or you return to be tortured, raped, or killed. At the end of the synod, there will be concluding remarks, but it will not be until 2024 for the publication of the conclusions that the participants will propose to Pope Francis. The consistory for the creation of cardinals will take place a few days before the opening of the Synod, and it will be an important occasion for members of the clergy to exchange opinions over several weeks. Synod organizers hope that this event will help promote unity and a more welcoming spirit in the church.
Looking now at news from around the country, state education officials in Massachusetts have unanimously approved new curriculum guidelines for health and sexual education. It's the first time the framework has been updated since 1999. Intended for public school students in grades pre-K through 12, the new health and physical education framework touches on topics including mental health, healthy relationships, and according to state educators, age-appropriate conversations around gender and sexuality. The Massachusetts Catholic Conference, the public policy arm of the Catholic Church in Massachusetts, in a letter to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, had pointed out several ob objectionable standards in the new gu guidelines. James Driscoll, the executive director of the conference, said they objected to the framework of students age 11 to 18 being taught how to prevent sexually transmitted infections, pregnancy options, and the positive and negative consequences of sexual activity. Driscoll also in the letter objected to the plan to teach children as young as eight years old about sexual reproduction, sexual orientation and gender identity. Driscoll wrote that teachers would give a specific description of both biological sex and gender identity and how behavior or appearance does not define one's gender identity or expression. Driscoll wrote that parents, not schools, should be responsible for teaching children about sex at a time, place and age they deem appropriate for their children. Despite the state having approved the guidelines, districts have the final say on what curriculum and materials to use. State law also allows parents to opt their children out of sex education if they choose. However, Driscoll suggested it would be better to have students opt in if they want to take the classes. More news from around the world. According to a report from a Russian news agency, Pope Francis and the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church could meet again soon. The two church leaders have only met once through a video call since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Pope Francis and Patriarch Kirill, the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, could meet again soon. This was reported by the Russian agency RIA Novosti in a conversation with the country's new ambassador to the Holy See, Ivan Soltanovsky, who recently presented his credentials to the Pope. In statements to this media, the diplomat said that Pope Francis had expressed his hope that the meeting he had with Kirill in Havana would not be the last and that he would be able to see him again. For their part, the Moscow Patriarchate also said through this media that they are open to the possibility of a new meeting, but that for the moment they are waiting on the Vatican's initiative. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the two church leaders have met only through a video call. In their conversation, the main topics were the conflict and the role of Christians in achieving peace. During the Pope's trip to Kazakhstan in September last year, there was hope that the two would be able to meet again in person. But in the end, Patriarch Kirill decided not to make the journey. Instead, the Patriarch's foreign minister attended. Pope Francis met with the Russian delegation and expressed his desire for a second meeting with the Russian Orthodox leader. Patriarch Kirill did meet with the papal envoy for the peace mission in Ukraine when Cardinal Matteo Zuppi traveled to Moscow at the end of June. And recently, the Kremlin's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, announced that another trip to Russia could possibly be made. And finally in the news, earlier this summer in Albany, Minnesota, Jeff Gerads volunteered to construct a giant rosary for the Harvest of Hope area Catholic community. He enlisted the help of his two sons, Ethan, who was 16, and Owen, 12. At the time, he could never know how special that rosary would become. Ethan, his 16-year-old son, was killed in a car accident July 21st. Now that rosary and the community are helping the family, Jeff and his wife Melissa, Owen and his sister Emma, to cope with the loss. People from across the Harvest of Hope community, which includes the parishes in Albany, Avon, St. Martin and St. Anthony in central Minnesota, gathered in early September to pray a special living rosary to remember Ethan using the rosary he helped make. Ethan was an usher and an altar servant and would have been a junior this year at Albany High School. According to his father, Jeff, Ethan grew up seeing his dad pray the rosary while they were hunting, and Ethan had started bringing his own rosary on the hunting trips. Melissa, Ethan's mom, said that the rosary was displayed outside during Ethan's wake and funeral, and many people stopped to pray there. Nobody would just walk by, she said. They would stop, and they would start praying. It's just amazing, she said, how this tragedy brought so many people together. Well, that's all the information we have for this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network. Such a sad story, and Ethan and his entire family are in our prayers here, and I hope you all are a powerful prayer community. We ask you to pray for William as well today. Well, now we go to a movie trailer, and this is Journey 
to Jerusalem, and it's coming out November 10th. Let's take a look. I've always known you are special. Nothing will change that, Mary. Tell Mary we are ready. The music, play. Mary, you're getting married. It's about to be the best day of your life. Um, Joseph, I feel like we're already friends, no? Harry, God has chosen you to have a son, the king of all kings. This wasn't a dream. An angel came to me. It's hard to have faith. It's hard to believe. Look at the star. The future holds more. This is it. Let's go. There are too many questions to let all time. The divine king is to be born in your land. It's a mountain to hide a cloud. Why would I help find a new king in my kingdom? <laughs> when you put it that way. Perhaps we should go. What is the exit? It's going to be king. Everyone wants my crown. I want the mother found. Don't have to be good. Those men are looking for you. Herod must know of the prophecy. He wants my child. It's so stinking good to be good. Joseph! I'm not the only one who's chosen for this. You have a choice. You can say you believe me and that you love me. Will you still marry me, Joseph? I do. I will. Yes, of course, yes. You truly believe that this child is the chosen one. What is his name? Jesus. I think even Fig is beginning to tolerate you. Stop. Stop. Hmm. Journey to Bethlehem coming out November 10th. Journey to Bethlehem, because I think I got that wrong yeah. at the beginning. <laughs> Journey to Bethlehem. And then I watched it. It looks like it's a great movie. That's the type of movie that's going to do well because it's a family movie. And we need more family movies. Yeah, it looks like some great music. Uh, I believe some, like, people uh, that were involved are involved in some of the Disney uh, musicals too. So, And, and I'm excited because I was with uh, the group going with me to the Holy Land last night and we're going to be, the first place we're going is Bethlehem. We'll be right there where all mm -hmm. that song and dance <laughs> happened. Okay, then you're going to get over to Jerusalem? Yeah, exactly. We'll, <laughs> take, a, we'll take a trip over there and, too. Uh, and who know, and Antonio Banderas could sing. Uh, we'll we'll find out. <laughs> King Herod. I think he's yeah, he's a great actor too. Yeah, so it's no, just a great yeah. cast. It's going to be awesome. National days. Uh, na uh, National States and Capitals Day. Jay, you were up at the board earlier. I'm good yeah. at states, capitals, uh, not as much. The United States has 50 states, 50 state capitals. We might remember learning them as kids, maybe as adults. It was a song. To get some of the capitals or whatever. What letter? This is a little t test, a quiz for you. Is the only letter not found in any of the state names? X. What letter? Nope. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, we got a hand up in the Q. audience. Q. Q is yeah, right. Q is right, Jay. This uh, other facts too, but we're running out of time. National Girls Night. Uh, National Girls Night encourages women to gather with their best girlfriends for a night to relax, recharge, and foster meaningful connections. Surely loves that night. Get out there. Every, yeah. every weekend is National Girls Night. <laughs> 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 Why do I do this? I'm in trouble. Uh. Um, you like ice cream, Jay, but hold on. It's National Ice Cream Cone Day. Love it. According to See, Brian? According to Joy Cone. Sugar cones are better, though. The company that makes delicious ice cream cone. The ice cream be cone, cone began to gain like popularity in ones. 1904 when an event at a St. Louis World's Fair led to a widespread love for the ice cream cone. Um, according to this, um, I'm running out of time. Yes, a you guy was, was making waffles and they put Black raspberry, my favorite ice cream. National Elephant Appreciation Day. I love elephants. National <laughs> Dear Diary Day. Don't have one. Uh, write your diary. Journaling. It's Start good. one. It's good for you. Therapeutic. Thank you so much for being with us again. We, <coughs> we ask you to remember Ethan and we ask you to remember William and your prayers and all the people in the prayers and all of you in our thoughts and in our prayers. And we're so grateful to you, 
for helping us to reach that magnificent goal of 409,000. I have to look over here, 286. Thank you so much to all of our friends. And may God bless you this day and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, everyone.